call this special town meeting to order. I've been informed by the, uh, by the, checker, the uh, uh, people checking people in that as of 7.30, we had 114 people uh, registered to vote in attendance, and therefore a quorum is met. Uh, as first order of business, um, if you would please join me in welcoming, we have two of our Boy Scouts from Troop 34 here tonight to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We have Connor Keene, who's a Life Scout and a Senior Patrol Leader, and Liam Keene, who is a Star Scout. So if they could please join me up here and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you all please join me in the saying of the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Now, as we've been doing in the last uh, last several town meetings, just want to pause for a moment and remember some of the people who have passed away uh, since we last met. Um, two town residents who uh, devoted themselves to the town, James Wilde and Judith Hatch. Uh, and I'd also like to recognize the passing of Senator Thomas Kennedy, uh, who uh, was from Brockton but represented Hanson for many years in the state Senate. Uh, and unfortunately, he passed away very recently. So if we could just have a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. And also, I'd like to uh, give a special welcome and thank you to uh, Rich LaCamera, who has been very ably uh, acting as the town administrator for the last several months. Uh, he was instrumental in putting together this town meeting and helping out the selectmen. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, acknowledge him and to thank him very much for his help. See, also in attendance tonight, we have our state representative, Josh Cutler, who declined an opportunity to speak, so thank you very much. <laughs> we also have two of the candidates for uh, state senate that'll be running in the special election to replace Senator Kennedy. Uh, I'll acknowledge Representative uh, Jeff Deal. and Representative Michael Brady. I would remind everybody that there is a special election tomorrow. The polls will open at 7 o'clock and be open until 8 o'clock. That's at the McQuan School. Um, turnout, I hope, will be robust. So please come out and vote. <laughs> well, I can hope. A couple of other uh, uh, quick announcements. Uh, troop 34, the Boy Scout troop in town, will be having a pumpkin sale October 17th and 18th on the Town Hall Green. They'll also be camping out that night, so no shenanigans, no uh, trying to take the pumpkins when nobody's looking. Um, but please show your support for the Boy Scouts. And also, this Friday, October 9th, we will be having the Pack the Pantry auction. That's to benefit the Hanson Food Bank. It'll be held at the Meadowbrook Restaurant from six to nine. There's no fee, but there will be an auction, so bring your checkbook. To begin, um, I have to make a, the announcement that tonight's rules will be taken from the uh, parliamentary procedure of town meeting time. So if you would like, please take out your copy and follow along. We have uh, several important articles tonight. We'll try and get through them as quickly as we possibly can, as I've been asked by several town residents. Uh, on the other hand, I do anticipate a decent amount of debate on a few of the articles. Uh, as always, what I would ask you to do is please go to the uh, microphone, or if you can't make it to the microphone, I'll ask somebody to bring it to you. Um, but if you could please state your name and your address uh, and uh, um, Please try not to be repetitive. We'll move as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, but make your argument. Don't make it a second time. If you're thinking of the same words, say, maybe I don't need to say that again. And we'll, uh, we'll hear everybody's point of view, and we will move on. Uh, 
Finally, uh, there are several articles in here that require a nine-tenths vote or a two-thirds vote uh, to be legally binding. And therefore, what I'm going to do is ask uh, the consent of town meeting right here at the beginning that I be able to make that determination uh, on a voice vote. Uh, very often these are done unanimously or maybe with one or two dissenters and if, if that's the case then I'll declare it a nine-tenths or a two-thirds vote. If anybody calls it into question, of course, we'll go to a recorded vote. Uh, that is not a problem. Uh, just make your wishes known. Right? So, so can I have a second on that motion? Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Say aye. All those opposed, nay? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. And with that, we will get going. Article one, Mr. Howard. I move the town vote to transfer $2,630 from free cash to pay unpaid bills for fiscal year 2015. Do we have a second? Seconded. Mr. Howard? Uh, there are a few unpaid bills from various departments which were received after the end of the fiscal year 2015. And uh, I would just point out to everyone that this requires a nine-tenths vote. Uh, is there any discussion on Article 1? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 1 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it by a nine-tenths vote. Article 2. Mr. McGann. I move the town vote to authorize the treasurer collection to establish an other post-employment benefits OPEB trust account in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 32B, Section 20. Second. Seconded. Mr. McGann. The National, the National Financial Reporting Standards requires that the town disclose approved liabilities relative to other post-employment benefits. The most recent actuarial valuation calculates the liability to be over $12.5 million. Establishing the OPEB trust will allow the town to set aside funds as part of the budget process to address this library. I'm sorry, uh, I, I've been told that some people didn't hear. Could you please uh, just give the explanation again in the microphone, sir? The, the, the National Financial Reporting Standards requires that the town disclose accrued liabilities relative to other post-employment benefits. The most recent actuarial valuation calculates the liability to be over $12.5 million. Establishing the OPEB trust will allow the town to set aside funds as part of the budget process to address this liability. The motion having been seconded, are, is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of Article 2 signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 2 is adopted. Article 3, Mr. Young. Article 3, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $96,044 to supplement appropriations previously voted at the annual town meeting of May 2015 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2015 for various town departments as printed in the warrant. Do we have a second? Yes. Second. Seconded. Mr. Young. Hey, Mr. Moderator, uh, are we going to take this uh, line by line? If we do, and there's a question on it, I would ask the department, uh, yield to the department head so he can explain uh, the variance, uh, if uh, that's fine with you. Very good. What I'll do is I'll go each line item, the far left column, I'll call it out. If no one um, wishes to speak, or I'm sorry, if anybody would like to speak to it, please say hold. If no one says hold, I will consider it adopted. Um, and uh, anything held will go back and you can speak on it. Item one, adopted. Item two, Adopted. Item three, adopted. Item four, adopted. Item five, adopted. Oh, did I hear a hold on that one? Item five is held. Item six, adopted. Item seven, adopted. Uh, Mr. Kemet, would you be so kind to take the uh, <laughs> microphone to Mr. Sutter? So now we'll return to item five for any questions or discussion. Who is the tree warden now? The tree warden would be uh, Mr. Brown. 
Is he a registered arborist? He doesn't have to be. Yes, he does. <coughs> no, uh, please direct all conversation through now, me. He's now appointed, not elected. That's elected. Would uh, Mr. Young, would you like to respond? Um, treat yeah, the tree warden is still in an elected position under the uh, under the town bylaws of the town of Hanson. Any further questions, Mr. Sutter? I'd like clarification from the town attorney. Clarification from town council. There, there is no such requirement under, under law. Any other questions or comments on item five? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting item five signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Now we'll vote on the entire article uh, inclusive. Uh, all those in favor of article three, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 3 is adopted. Article 4, Mr. Wajdag. Or, I'm sorry, Mr. McKinnon. I move the town vote to transfer a sum of $10,000 from free cash added to stabilization. Do we have a second? Second. Second, and Mr. McKinnon. Uh, this money is used to increase our stabilization, a rainy day fund. After we transfer $10,000, our stabilization fund is, will be at $1,041,678. Any questions or comments on Article 4? This requires a two-thirds vote, so all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it by a two-thirds vote. Article 4 is adopted. Article 5, Mr. Scott. Article 5, I move the town vote to transfer $3,000 from free cash to purchase and install a secured exterior drop box for the delivery of tax and bill payments. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Scott. These funds are used to purchase and install a permanent exterior drop box which will afford residents the convenience of delivering their payments or other town hall departmental correspondence from their vehicles during regular and non-business hours. The drop box is not exclusive to payments. The estimated cost of that was $3,000. Any questions or comments? Yes. Chair recognizes Ms. Arena. Barbara Arena, 131 Whitman Street. I know the Finance Committee voted not to recommend this, and I know why, because um, <laughs> I used to be there. Um, however, I, I agree with them on this, that it's $3,000. I understand that the town employees have been asked that this would be a convenience for certain townspeople, but there are alternative methods in terms of electronic um, stamps still work. And $3,000 plus the aggravation that our town employees would have to go through to get to this drop box on a daily basis, not to mention shovel it out or plow around it. Um, for a good couple of months out of the year just seems to be a little bit of a waste of money in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Would anybody like to respond? Mr. Young. Only from a financial standpoint, and I know that other towns have this particular item in place, and it's not only a convenience, um, but having a financial background, I know the easier you make the process to pay your bills, the quicker you're going to get your bills. And the quicker you get your bills, the sooner you're going to be able to put that money into uh, action for the town. Uh, the other thing is, obviously, it doesn't only include uh, the payment of bills. It would be your, your, uh, your annual census forms and, and all other types of correspondence, you're not only saving your, what is it, postage stamp now, 45 cents, 47 cents, or whatever it is, 48, you'd be saving, you'd be saving on mailing charges, 
you'd be saving the three dollar charge that if you want to uh, if you want to do it electronically a lot of people still don't trust the electronic method because of the the ability to get uh, to have your information uh, scammed offline so a lot of people still don't like to do that they like to come into the town hall and make their payment this would avoid them coming into town hall and driving up to a secure box I believe it's going to be located out in the parking lot and depositing all that information. So it's not only a savings for you, but the quicker the town, the easier it is to make your payment, the sooner the town's going to get their money. And Any so other? it makes perfect sense to me The $3,000 is a, is a small price to pay for the convenience to the, of the townspeople. Is there any other comment or questions? Yes, please. Hi, Lee Gamash, 819 Main Street, and I'm an employee at the town hall. And I recommend this. Um, my office is right beside one of the doors at the town hall, and I can't tell you how many times I've seen like elderly people. They don't pay online, um, but I've seen them come in and just struggle trying to get into the town hall when they could just drive up to this box. Um, young mothers with children, too, you see them lugging everything out of the car to come in and pay a bill when they could just drop it in a box. So I urge you to, uh, to vote yes for this. Thanks. All right. Seeing no other uh, comment, all those in favor of Article 5 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes have it. Article 5 is adopted. Article 6, Mr. Scott. Yes, Article 6. I move to the town to vote and to, or transfer from free cash to, the, to fund an engineering and plan design. Mr. Scott, uh, sorry to interrupt, but you have to give the figure. I move that the town will vote to transfer $30,000 from free cash to fund the engineering and plan designs for a new highway building facility. Do we have a second? Second. Second. And Mr. Scott. These funds are needed to conduct an overall evaluation and plan when designs to accommodate the needs of the highway department. Uh, this, this was based on information that we provided to the Board of Selectmen from the building committee. <clears throat> Any questions or comments on Article 6? Mr. Norton. John Norton, 31 Indian Path. Um, Mr. Scott wrote a letter to the Hanson Express, which is duplicated here this evening. And uh, could you speak up, sir? I'm uh, sorry, maybe I'm the, not sure if the, the mic microphone is not on. Yes, now I can hear you. You can hear me now? Yes. Usually not a problem. Uh, anyway, in Mr. Scott's letter, he quite properly points out that to evaluate this project and to expedite it, uh, the town needs three figures. One, he has in his letter which would be the cost of updating our present facility. The second, which I think this is, is taking into account, is what it would cost to uh, rehab the buildings we just accepted to move the highway department out there. The third figure we need is the cost of cleaning up the existing site. And it seems to me, and to expedite things, we ought to be doing the engineering on those two things together. And I'm questioning whether there's enough money here to do that, because you really can't move till you have those two numbers to compare to the other number. And uh, it's the same kind of engineering, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to pay for two engineering studies when you could just slightly expand the one we're buying. Mr. Scott? Uh, this request is made based on the information that we have uh, you know, before us uh, that, that would incorporate uh, those issues in that study. Uh, we haven't gotten any figures uh, as yet uh, to address those issues. But, Mr. In, Norton, in order to expedite this, we'll ultimately need that figure. So why not get it at the same time? The people need to know, obviously we want to use these buildings, and I, exp I expect that that's what will happen. But we need the cost of doing that, which this engineering study will study, plus the cost of, of what it would cost to, to do it where it is, which is quite expensive, and add to that the cost of the cleanup. Because otherwise, if the town takes these one bite at a time, suppose, hypothetically, 
uh, this report comes in and gives us a nice figure for maintaining the, for moving, and we approve the move. And then the cleanup costs come in at $6 million or something. Uh, I'm just being hypothetical. We need that third number. So to expedite this whole project, why don't we just expand this engineering to include the cleanup of the si existing site and the cost to renovate the new buildings? Mr. Howard? Yeah, I believe the cleanup is completed up there. If, if I'm not right, no, Bill? The cleanup at the existing facility, because we all know we've been operating outside of EPA oh, guidelines okay. for several years. The cleanup, I said, was done already up at the new site, yeah, I, up on Hawks Avenue. That, that I'm aware Mr. of. North. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 6? Oh, Mr. Amico. Steve Amico, 95 Stephen Street. Um, has there been a traffic study as well done um, for the people who live on Reeds, Pleasant, and South? because there's gonna be quite a bit of traffic going down those streets, especially if this is all approved. Well, actually, and with that, I'm going to caution this. I don't want this debate to get outside of the scope. And this, is, this article is purely to fund an engineering and plan design for the new highway building. Well, uh, shouldn't, we have, shouldn't we have possession of these buildings before we even start doing a, a study on it? And shouldn't we study the impact that it's gonna to be to the residents who live on these streets? Right now, it's on a main street. These are all going to be going down side streets right. now. And I'm just saying that getting into other issues, I mean, we could, we could come up with a list of, of, what, 100 issues dealing with a piece of property. The scope of this article is purely on the engineering. But would somebody like to respond to Mr. Amico? Hmm. Mr. Howard? No, I don't know, Steve, whether or not the, the traffic would equal or not when uh, light control was down here. But I'm sure that there was uh, plenty of traffic down there when that light control was down there. And I don't think there will be much more than that. And again, it, discussing traffic, it, when we have an article on a traffic study, then that, this would make perfect sense. Ms. Kemet. Um, yes. Um, I would like to tack on maybe a little bit of additional money to this. Uh, keep the article. We need to do an engineering study, clearly. Um, but to. Um, take a look independently at the contamination at that site to make sure that the piece of the two acres we're getting um, is, has got a clean bill of health. Uh, because what we were told at last town meeting by the um, engineer from GEI was that they had tested the portion that was going to be going on to, over to wildlife fisher and uh, Fisher, Fish, uh, but that um, they had not tested the portion that we were getting. And if we're going to put money into an engineering study, I would hope that we would make sure that we don't have any contamination on the property before we put in more money. So I, I would just like to amend and tack on, you know, um, I, you know, like another ten, fifteen thousand dollars to the article, um, and I'd be more than glad to write it up. Um, to make sure that we're kicking the tires and that we don't have contamination on that property. I just think it's the smart thing to do. Uh, just as a preliminary matter, I do believe it's within the scope to change the figure here, but I would be worried about adding an amount of money without any basis for it. Mr. Scott. Uh, basically, the, those issues have already been addressed. The site that we are getting, the land that we are getting, is considered a clean site at the present time. They have remediated all those. They, we've discussed all of that at the former town meeting before the townspeople voted for that uh, to accept the project. They are still involved in a, in a cleanup of the overall property. The, the property, regardless of what happens with it, will still be enhancing when it's all said and done. And in addition to that, just so people are aware of it, there are 50 separate DEP sites in the current town of Hanson as, as we speak. The only one that I know of, my understanding, that's being actively cleaned up and remediated is the light control property, which I think is a plus as we move forward. Uh, we've also, in our consideration, and it's not before you tonight, we're considering uh, possibly hiring a license by the state of Massachusetts site professional to review everything that's been done so far down there. And I, I would think that obviously would be the first step in this process. And if they give us any, uh, raise any red flags or anything up in the, of that nature, we certainly would address that. And that may end up in having it not move forward. But if we pass over the money at this time, 
uh, we're trying to be proactive with this and move this forward as, as we speak. So that's the reasoning behind it. But I guess that's exactly what I'm saying is, uh, um, I, is I, why are we studying the property before we've hired our own um, professional for the site? It just seems like we're putting the order of things is not is not right. We're going to be spending money on a site that we don't have a professional that's told us whether or not it's fine. And I understand what Mr. Scott is saying, but I did rewatch the town meeting um, from May before today, um, and um, what the what the gentleman from Hubble said, and I wish he was here, but their uh, professional said was that what they do is they take. The contam where they think the contamination started, and then they figure out where they think it spread to, and then that that gets them to a certain point. They believe that the property that we're getting gifted is beyond that scope. But he said, with w he did not stutter. He said, I cannot tell you that there's no contamination on that site. He said those words, and I'm just saying, if we're going to spend money and we're going to move our guys there, and we're trying to do better for highway, can we please make sure there's no contamination? on that property. Yes, please. If I could just have uh, the town administrator uh, respond. One of the issues that's very important to this site is that the town makes sure that the property is clean. The town has not accepted the deed at, the, at this point. And unless the town gets a 21E from them, the town is not going to accept it. So that's very important because if we're going to borrow money to do any renovation to the highway bond, the bond company would insist that we have a 20-O&E and that property is clean even before we take it over. So um, Mr. Scott's recommendation is that once the 21-E is done, then we would have a licensed site inspector check to make sure, looking at the 21-E and all the reports coming from DEP, that it is clean. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, may I just add one additional, and, and then I, I swear that I'll move on. Um, uh, just, I also, when we're looking at the 21E, could we please uh, pay attention to whether or not it is Hubble that is giving us the 21E or Light Control that's giving us the 21E? Because as you know, it was a stock deal. And light control doesn't have a lot of assets, whereas Hubble does. And all of the filings have been done by light control to the DEP. And a lot of the letters, in fact, I've got one uh, here, is very specific where um, they're saying it's GEI um, on behalf of light control, on behalf of light control. And there have been court cases, and again, I'm not saying that this is going to happen here, but there have been court cases where people have taken a 21E, they've gone to go open it up and go after the, um, you know, the person that they thought was responsible, only to find there wasn't anybody there. Uh, well, and, and again, that probably will be a debate for another day. It will, but... Once, I, it's, once I, it's germane to the article. If we could move on you. to Ms. Buzan. Ian Marie Buzan, 95 Woodbrook Lane. Um, I would like to, to move to pass over this article just until we have the actual deed in our hand. I don't believe that we should be putting $30,000 worth of the town's monies towards a project that we don't even know if we're going to accept the land right now. <laughs> Ms. Buzan, are you recommending uh, that people vote against this article or are you substituting a motion for the motion of Mr. Scott? I'm substituting a motion that we just pass over. Okay. So the motion, is there a second? The, the motion that is on the table, or the mo, I'm sorry, the motion currently being discussed is to uh, table this article. Um, any, uh, could we have a response or is there any discussion before we move to a vote on that motion? Mr. Young. Uh, this board is trying to be proactive. This board, the town, the last town meeting voted to take for the direct the, the, the board of selectmen to take possession of this property, and we're trying to we're trying to do a a study here to make sure it's feasible to convert this building into a highway department. How much of that property we're we going to need? How much of the building we're we going to need? This will be put into an article, and that article will will have thirty thousand dollars in that article. So when we do take possession of that property, we'll be able to do the study and conduct the study um, for the feasibility of, uh, of um, 
converting that property and retrofitting it into a into a new highway department. So no, I would, through you, Mr. Moderator, do, don't you think you're putting the cart before the horse? No, no. we don't have a we don't have the property yet. No, not yet. at all. Now, I don't think a motion to pass over is uh, worthy of a long debate. I think we've gotten the issues out. So at this point, um, the motion to pass over has been seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The nays have it, unless someone would like to uh, have a, a recorded vote. A recorded vote has been asked. Uh, therefore, if we could have the tellers please uh, take the count. Um, at this time, all those in favor of Ms. Buzan's motion to pass over Article 6, please signify by raising your blue card. Mr. Weeks? Six. Ms. Kemet? Fourteen. Mr. Norton? Twenty-four. All those opposed to the motion to pass over, please signify by raising your blue card at this time. Ms. Kemet? Uh, 38. 38. Mr. Weeks? 18. 18. Mr. Norton? 4. 4. So by a vote of 60 to 44, the motion fails. Now, um, if seeing no other uh, discussion on Article 6, We'll move to that vote now. All those in favor of Article 6, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes have it. Article 6 is adopted. Article 7, Mr. Mitchell. I move the town vote to transfer 17,000 from free cash to be added to the appropriation under Article 8 of the May 2012 special town meeting regarding firefighters' retirement. Do we have a second? Seconded. Mr. Mitchell. These funds are needed to fund sick time and vacation buyback of retiring employees, approximately $17,000. Any questions or comment on Article 7? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 7 signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 7 is adopted. Article 8, Mr. Howard. I move the town vote to transfer $10,000 from free cash to be added to the Regional Schools Capital Stabilization Fund as established by the October 2014 special town meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded. Uh, Mr. Howard. The stabilization fund sets aside funds for the exclusive use of paying for capital improvements to the Hanson School Buildings and the Whitman Hanson Regional High School, estimated at $10,000. Any questions or comments on Article 8? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 8 signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 8 is adopted. Article 9, Mr. Hayes. I move the town vote to transfer from free cash $12,100 to reimburse Whitman Hanson Regional School District <laughs> to replace the 225-gallon PVI water heater at the Regional High School with a high-efficiency tankless gas unit. Second. Second. And Mr. Hayes. The current, water at Whitman Han the current water heater at the Whitman Hanson Regional School is unreliable for delivery of hot water due to equipment failure. 
The total cost of the project is twenty nine thousand dollars, of which forty one point seven one percent is Hanson share, and the estimated cost is twelve thousand one hundred dollars. Any questions or comments on Article Nine? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article Nine signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article Nine is adopted. Article 10, Mr. Hayes. I move the town vote to transfer from free cash $79,841.03 to reimburse the Whitman Hanson Regional School District to complete the repairs at the Hanson Middle School first floor classrooms clogged by a, caused by a clogged waste pipe on April 13, 2015. Second. Second, and Mr. Hayes. The total cost of the repairs at the Hanson Middle School was estimated at $179,841.03. The insurance limit for clogged waste pipe is capped at $100,000 per occurrence, leaving a balance of $79,841.03. Any questions or comments on Article 10? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 10 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 10 is adopted. Article 11, Mr. McGann. Mr. Moderator, I motion to pass over <coughs> Article 11. We have a motion to pass over. Do we have a second? Second. All those, any questions or comments? All those in favor of passing over Article 11, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 11 is passed over. <laughs> Article 12, uh, Chief Thompson. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen. I move the town vote to transfer $20,000 from free cash to the purchase of a new analog digital repeater. Second. Seconded. Mr. Tom or Chief Thompson. The current repeater for the police department is beginning to fail. This piece of equipment is crucial to the public safety network in our town. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 12 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 12 is adopted. Article 13, Mr. Howard. I move the town vote to transfer $20,000 from water surplus account to be added to the 1992 town meeting water emergency fund. Yeah, actually, first, uh, if you could finish reading the, uh, the motion, please. Donnie. Mr. Howard. They can't hear you, Donnie. Article 15. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. You just had to finish saying emergency fund article. 15. Article 15. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Second. Seconded. Mr. Howard. Uh, the article is basically to replenish the emergency line, which is used for unexpected expenses and are not budgeted in our general budget line. Any questions or comments on Article 13? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 13 signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Article 13 is adopted. Article 14, Mr. Howard. I move the town vote to transfer $17,000 from water surplus for the water audit survey for the water department's renewal of the Water Management Act. Second. Seconded. Mr. Howard. The department's Water Management Act is renewed every 20 years. This water audit survey is part of the process. In our renewal process, DEP is required that the water departments keep their unaccounted for water under 10 percent of their total water withdrawn for the, total, for the year. Any questions or comments on Article 14? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 14 signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 14 is adopted. Article 15, Mr. Howard. I move the town vote to transfer from water surplus $15,000 to purchase a new SCADA computer and the software for the office. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded. Mr. Howard. This, commute, this computer is an upgrade for the SCADA supervisory control and data question system. It allows the water department operators full access control and monitoring of the pump stations, chemical building, and water tank from the office. They can also view the status of the distribution system 24 hours a day remotely from the laptops and monitor and answer all alarms that come in on the SCADA. Any questions or comments on Article 15? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 15, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 15 is adopted. Article 16, Mr. Brown. 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move the town raise and appropriate the sum of $74,711 and to borrow $95,000 to purchase an equipped one front end loader for the highway department. And that the treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow $95,000 under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, or any other enabling authority to do authorize the Board of Selectmen to take all actions necessary to carry out this project in behalf of the name of the town. Second. Seconded. Mr. Brown. Um, this slaughter is just started 11 years old. Usually, uh, we've usually replaced them after 10 years. That's usually about the best we can get out of a front end loader before we start having major breakdowns. The loader right now is a leaky rear main seal, which is very expensive to repair. It's in need of uh, tires all the way around, which is between eight and nine thousand dollars, and has become unreliable. Uh, last winter, in the middle of winter, we had the radiator let go. So we're falling one year behind, but so this is why I'm here this year with it. Are there any questions or comments on Article 16? S Mr. Hayes? Bob Hayes, 80 Green Grove. Bob, the, through you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Bob, it says the estimated cost is one sixty nine seven hundred. And eleven dollars, correct? I'm sorry, I must not have heard you. I'm sorry. Is there a trading value to the Volvo? Forty-five thousand dollars. Oh. <laughs> Is there a question that I can? Uh... Is there a trading value on the 05 loader, the Volvo, through you, Mr. Moderator, to Mr. Brown? And Mr. Brown, could you respond? It was forty-five thousand dollars for a trade-in. Okay, thank you, Bob. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of art, oh, I'm sorry, this, because there is a borrowing aspect to this article, um, I'll just make this announcement and then go to you, Mr. Norton. Uh, there's a, a borrowing uh, aspect to this, and therefore it requires a two-thirds vote. Mr. Norton. Uh, because this was on the capital improvement matrix, uh, we actually have taken some votes and had some conversation about this, and I thought I'd weigh in with what the committee thought. Uh, first of all, we recognize the need for a new piece of equipment. Uh, we did not have sufficient funds to make the outright purchase with the last year's capital allocation. Uh, we would have given it attention this coming year. Um, since I saw it on the article, we had some discussion at the committee and we voted. The committee voted unanimously to recommend if it was done as an outright purchase. But the committee voted unanimously not to recommend if it was done with borrowing and a trade-in. And there's two reasons for this. Uh, one, we don't like to see borrowing on a piece of equipment because it just adds interest to the cost. Secondly, when you trade your piece of equipment in, which is necessary to make these numbers work, the dealer who gets it intends to sell that for a profit, obviously. That's not an altruistic move. The ordinary way for a town to acquire something like this is to buy the piece of equipment outright, make the item the surplus, and then auction off the surplus item. So you'll not only get more for the front end loader than you will get in the trade in, but you will also save all of the interest. So I really, we had a million some dollars of free cash. I'd really like to see this be an outright purchase, not put borrowing, and I'm concerned. I don't know whether this borrowing is intended to come from future capital budgets or whether there's another means. I, I'm not certain what Chapter 44, Section 7 says. Any but. comments or questions? Seeing none. All those in... Oh. Sorry. Ms. Buzon. Um, Amory Buzon, 95 Woodbrook Lane. I'm just trying to do the math. If we have a $45,000 trade-in, and we're, we're getting 74,711 out of raise and appropriate and 95,000 out of borrowing, that adds up more to 169,711. I don't get the math. If we could have the town administrator please speak to that. Trade 
Yeah, the, the trade-in is $40,000, and then the total state contract price delivered is one sixty nine seven eleven and no cents. So that's okay. been factored into the math. I guess, I guess I'm just still... And this is, is the first time I'm looking at the contract, so if somebody else would like to talk about this, please. Mr. Hayes. Oh, class So It appears to me that it's 209711 and right. deduct the 40000 That's what I was getting at. So the difference in the trade between the trade and the retail price, the, the wholesale price, the town bid list price, the original price is 209711 Is that right, Mr. Bennett? That's correct. And you deduct 40000 so they... The estimated trade difference okay. is 169.71. That's what I would Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Any other questions or comments? All right. At this time, we'll take a vote on Article 16. All those in favor of Article 16 signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Aye. The ayes have it. Article 16 is adopted by a two thirds vote. She has no trust in me. <laughs> Article 17, Mr. Brown. I move the town vote to raise and appropriate a sum of $45,000 to purchase and equip one F-150 pickup truck for the highway department. Second. Seconded, Mr. Brown. Uh, this truck will replace the current 2007 truck that is used by myself, the highway surveyor. The mileage now is 107,000. It's become expensive to maintain and has uh, basically become uh, rotting out from the inside out. So. Any other questions or comments? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown, when you made your motion, did you say free cash? Oh, raise an appropriate. Raise an appropriate. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Moderator, Joe Campbell, 150 Woodbine Ave. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> Mr. Brown just uh, annotated what the actual maintenance is that they're requiring or requesting to repair, and that is rotting out from the inside. Is that correct? Rotting out from the inside. Okay. Uh, I would also, I would like to hear from the CIC. So the chair for the CIC got up and spoke about the loader. Could I also hear from the chair uh, in regards to his comments from the CIC, whether they voted to recommend or prioritize this, this article? Mr. Norton. Actually, due to the um, replacement date, this doesn't qualify for capital funds because the uh, first uh, qualification is an amount of money which has been changed from 25 to 35,000, uh, which this would qualify. But the other is that the asset has to have a life expectancy of 10 years. And judging that this is only eight years old, I'm guessing that we're not going to get any pickup trucks running 10 years for this highway department. Thank you. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Uh, Mr. Moderator, through you, uh, I would like to move to amend the motion, and I would like for Article 16 to read, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer a sum of money, money from free cash or available funding source to purchase and equip an F-150 pickup truck for the highway department and to place the existing vehicle as surplus or trade in toward the new purchase with consideration of which choice would bring more revenue to the town. The article currently as it's written does, has a beginning, a middle, but there's no end in regards to what's going to happen to the existing vehicle. Mr. Brown. The end of that story would be that that pickup truck would be going, being put in reserve for the police department to use, which would retire their black bread truck from carrying around barricades and towing trailers. With the understanding that it's used minimally, that it will not last if it's used every week. All right. And actually, uh, let me speak to Mr. Campbell's motion, too. Uh, Mr. Campbell was nice enough to put his motion into writing and to give it to me before the town meeting. Kudos to you. Uh, I have spoken to the town council about this, and, I, and I'm going to rule that the amendment is out of the scope of the town meeting for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, there was no real notice that this was going to happen, um, and therefore, you know, people weren't put on on call to come to the town meeting and talk about the the uh, giving the truck somewhere else. The other reason is is that 
under state law, this is really the province of the Board of Selectmen. So the, the natural progression would be, we uh, once this is redirected, it's up to the selectmen to decide what to do with the uh, with the outdated truck. Um, so I, I'm sure that'll come up at a future selectmen's meeting, um, and I'm sure the selectmen would love to talk to you about it. But I'm going to rule this out of the scope for the purposes of tonight's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Monterey. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Any other comments or questions about Article 17? Ms. Buzan. Can I just make a comment that um, the Board of Health and the um, Conservation and Planning have been looking for vehicles. They, they drive through septic and conservation land, and they've been looking for a vehicle for quite some time and always been told we don't have one, we don't have one. I'd just like to ask the Board of Selectmen if they would consider giving this truck to um, one of those departments or for all of them to share at this time. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you. That I'm sure the selectmen have taken note. Thank you. Ms. King. Ms. King, 87 Glenwood Place, um, off of what Ms. Bion just had to say, if I'm not mistaken, when I drive past Town Hall, isn't there two Town of Hanson vehicles in the parking lot for the use of Town Hall employees to whomever can answer that? Would, would anybody like to answer that? The town administrator. Uh, we uh, currently had uh, one Crown Victor, Victoria, Victoria, whatever they're called, um, yeah. from the Crown Vic, thank you, from the police department. And most recently, there's been a uh, Dodge Charger police cruiser that has also been turned over. So there is two vehicles available at the town hall for use. Um, and a second question, Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Um, through you to Mr. Brown, I'd like to know if, as the highway supervisor, if he puts a plow on the vehicle, if you're out with, with the guys, and how much wear and tear his vehicle gets on a daily basis. Well, I, it, that seems like it's outside of the scope of this question. You're asking about his personal vehicle? No, the vehicle that he drives for the town. All right, Mr. Brown. No, the plow does not go on my truck or the supervisor's truck, because what happens is you end up plowing instead of supervising. That's for a reason. So. Any questions or comments uh, remaining? No, thank you. But I'd urge folks to vote for this um, and to give the vehicle to the police department, because Town Hall, in fact, has two vehicles that they can use. They don't need a third. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of Article 17 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Aye. The ayes have it. Article 17 is adopted. Article 18, Mr. McGann. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass oh, over. Could you uh, speak into the microphone, please? Mr. Moderator, I, I move to pass over Article 18. Do we have a second on that motion? There was a second. Oh, there was a second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor of passing over Article 18 signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 18 is passed over. Article 19, Chief Thompson. I move the, I move the town vote to transfer $28,000 from the ambulance account to purchase two Lucas II chest compression systems for our ambulances. Second. Seconded, Chief Thompson. This transfer is requested to equip both ambulances with the Lucas II chest compression system. The system provides quality compressions during CPR while freeing up paramedics to focus on other life-saving tasks. Any questions or comments on Article 19? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 19 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 19 is adopted. Article 20, Chief Thompson. I move the town vote to transfer $9,000 from free cash to replace the hot water furnace at the Main Street Fire Station. Second. Do we have a second? Seconded. Chief Thompson. This transfer is requested to have the hot water furnace at the Main Street Fire Station replaced. The existing furnace is over 30 years old. <coughs> Any questions or comments on Article 20? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Patty Norton, 31 Indian Path. You're talking about the one down on Route 27. Yes. Okay. That's correct. I threw you, Mr. Moderator, to Mr. Thompson. Is that place, is somebody living there? Do you use it? 
Chief Thompson. Who used the moderator to the, the speaker? Um, yes, we do use that station for training, and we do have equipment in there. So. Um, okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 20 signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 20 is adopted. Article 21, Chief Thompson. I move the town vote to transfer $20,000 from free cash for the construction to reconfigure the interior of the Liberty Street Fire Station. Second. Seconded. Chief Thompson. The fire station was built in 1978 as a senior center fire station. There has been only minor modifications over the years. These funds will allow us to reconfigure areas to address the operational needs of our department. This article was presented last year and passed over to provide funding for the fire alarm installations at Hanson Middle and Indian Head School. Any questions or comments on Article 21? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 21 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. nay. The ayes have it. Article 21 is adopted. Article 22, Chief Thompson. I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $30,000 to Article 8 of the October 7, 2013 Special Town Meeting Fire Station Septic Repair. Second. Second, Ed. Chief Thompson. These funds, along with the remaining funds in the article, will be utilized to finally install the septic system as well as bring our existing floor drains into compliance. Any questions or comments on Article 22? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 22 signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 22 is adopted. Thank you. Article 23, Mr. Mitchell. I move the town vote to amend Article 2-12, Clarification and Compensation, Section 11C, Part-Time Positions, by adding the following positions, by adding the positions as printed in the warrant. Second. Seconded. Mr. Mitchell. This is a housekeeping amendment. The three positions were inadvertently left off the matrix at the May 2015 special town meeting when the plan was updated. So we're not adding any positions, we're just adding these were left off the matrix when we redid that in May. Ms. Buzan. Through you, Mr. Moderator, to Mary Marini. Did we get an answer from the um, health assistant health agent? Could the town administrator please speak to that? I, I just got the job description last week and we will be updating it with the Board of Health. Okay, thank you very You're much. Welcome. Any other questions or comments on Article 23? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 23, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, Article 23 is adopted. Article 24, Mr. Young. Article 24 is, I move that the town will vote, uh, vote to lease for a term what, not more than 20 years, a certain radio tower located at High Street on terms and conditions as a selectman see fit, and to authorize the selectman to take any and all actions necessary uh, for such lease. Second. Seconded, Mr. Young. Explanation. The Board of Selectmen has received an inquiry to lease the radio tower located at the former Plymouth County Hospital. If approved, a request for proposal will be advertised for said lease. I just want to point out that this, is, this radio tower was deactivated about 20 years ago. I believe it used to be used for um, the BCI and also for um, police and fire networks. Uh, it was deactivated when the Plymouth County, um, Plymouth County Hospital moved off the site at some point. And uh, this, these particular groups are interested in reactivating the tower. Um, they will pay, they offered to, they will pay under, under the lease if they are awarded the lease because this has to go out to an RFP, okay? And anyone will be able to come in and make a proposal on that RFP per state law because it's town property under a lease. And um, the proposal that they made, which I'm certain we will include in any RFP or any, any subsequent lease, will call for that property, um, any, any repairs or maintenance to bring that tower into reactivation use will be paid for by the tenant. 
they will also take care of any any liability cost to the town and um, they will hold the town harmless of course it's basically one of these uh, bo boilerplate leases that are put forward that protects the town for any and all possible occurrence and gives that to the tenant so I mean um, the this basic lease may not necessarily go to the people who made the proposal it's who it will go to whoever submits the best proposal under the uh, RF request for proposals and the Board of Selectmen will examine those RFPs and make a decision that they feel is in the best interest of the town to lease that property and finally reactivate it um, the proposal that we we, we received from the proposal that we received was from the uh, Whitman Amateur Radio Club and the Hanson Emergency Communications Group and it would also provide uh, backup emergency communications uh, for the area, area for the town and for area citizens. So we didn't see any downside to it, but it's a lease and in order to get a lease approved, we've got to come before town meeting and this will also require a two thirds vote since we are leasing uh, town property. Thank you, you stole my line. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Faith Gernhardt, 66 Bonnie Hill Lane. Will the lease include the requirement that the power needs of the tower will come from the leasee, not from the town, because there's no power going to that site now? Absolute, absolutely. The, any, any, uh, any cost of reinstituting power to that site, be it electricity or anything else, the cost of running the lines, the cost of, of reactivating that site, and the power cost will all be borne by the tenant. Mr. Wojnick. Would this lease require, uh, give the town a 30 day out under any condition? Mr. Young? Did you say a 30 day out? Yes, standard boil plate lease. Yeah, we will, we will certainly, I don't know if it'll be 30 days, or, I mean, it, where are you getting the 30 days from? Is that a legal jargon or is it? Uh, we, will in, we will include an out basically for the town and I should tell you that in this lease, because it's located on the Plymouth County Hospital site, if this town de determines at some future date in the future that that particular parcel on which the radio tower sits uh, is the use of that property has a more preferred, has a more, a, a, a better preferred use that the town chooses other than a radio tower, then we will include a, a provision in that lease um, so that the lease can be, uh, the lease can be terminated, um, and instead the, the preferred use will go into effect. Thank you, Mr. Sutter. Through you, Mr. Moderator, I understand that this is governed entirely by the Act 30B, which designates all real estate transactions of town property that either to be leased or sold. Because of that. I would like to ask the selectmen what any, what any and all actions necessary to facilitate such a lease are. Mr. Young? Could you repeat that, please? <coughs> this is governed by 30B. Do you anticipate that there are other actions that you will need to take in order to facilitate such a lease? In other words, what I'm saying well, you're is just why asking is, me about the RFP well, that I'm I just explained. You why is that language in here? Because it's governed by 30B, and you, there aren't any other actions to take. I, I believe, and I've just spoken to town council, that the actions that would need to be taken would be to declare it surplus and then put out an RFP. Ah, good. That, I wish it had said that. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sutter. Any other questions or comments on Article 24, Mr. Wojnick? What's I'm just that? curious, the type of revenue, if any, we're expected to receive, and also, is there any, are they going to be on the town insurance at all, like, God forbid, the thing ever fell, who's liable at that point? Are they going to be on the town's insurance, or will they have their own to cover that? Mr. Young? I'm assuming, since this is a, a town-owned tower, that it must be covered under, and it's a town-owned structure, the structure itself must be covered under the of, under the town's uh, 
town's insurance policy if the, if the tower fell over. I mean, I, I'm just assuming that. If we could please, uh, be no objection, we'll hear from the town council on that point. We, we do have our own insurance, but as a component of a lease, we would require that they have insurance, full release, indemnification. We're not going to take on any responsibility or liability associated with the lease of such, especially this kind of piece of equipment. Mr. Weeks. Uh, hi, uh, Joe Weeks, 83 Hancock Street. I'm just, just curious. Um, I think uh, Chairman Young alluded to it a little bit, but it says uh, you can lease for not more than 20 years. What happens if I decide to lease it for 10 years and then we decide to develop Plymouth County Hospital and that site's kind of right in smack dab in yeah, what I, we want to do? I think I, I think I just answered that. We will, we will include a provision in the lease so that if that, if that site becomes a preferred site for, for some other use dealing with the development of the Plymouth County Hospital, mm -hmm. be it a park or developing a small industry or business up there, mm -hmm. then we will, have a, uh, we will have an out in that lease to provide for that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments on Article 24? Yes, sir. Steve Sol, Katie did. Can I have an answer to his question? The man to he asked about revenue. Oh, my question. Oh, I thought you had a question for me. Yes, Bruce, sorry. It was the question I asked before. Do we expect any revenue from this? Mr. Uh, John, please. I'll know better. We'll know better when the RFPs come in. We could very well receive an RFP that would, would provide some revenue for the town. Uh, you never know what you're going to get until would, you uh, would we put enter the RFPs into a lease up. Would there be no income? Mr. Washtag? Would we enter into a lease where there'd be no income? Mr. Young. Um, we have we have several leases up there now that we that provide that we don't have any income for. One being the the food pantry. Um, the the proposal was put forward by by um, by basically the Whitman Hanson Radio Club and the. Uh, Hanson Emergency Communication Group, uh, and it didn't it didn't include any any monetary value in it, but we we saw no downside on that particular proposal. But we're not sure at this point what what RFP we're going to approve and what kind of RFPs we're going to get once we put that proposal out, and we very very well could get a RFP in that does provide revenue for the town. That's that's a fact. Ms. Buzan. Emory Buzan, 95 Woodbrook Lane. So is it costing the town any money to make, put a lease together and put RFPs out? Mr. Young? Um, only to put a standard RFP out there, which I'm sure there's some boilerplate ones out there from, for leases like this in which you know, we will include our own verbiage, verbiage for and run it by town council uh, in order to prepare the RFP and advertise it. So I'm sure we're gonna have probably some advertising costs for the RFP and for the attorney to look at it and approve it to according to form. But just like any other, any other lease that, that we've taken, that have taken up in the past, such as the lease for the 24, 2,700 square feet behind the fire station, the lease, uh, the lease for the food pantry up at the um, uh, Plymouth County House. So there's basic costs that, that go into that, sure. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of Article 24, please signify by saying, yes, sir. Uh, John Barada from uh, Meadowland. Um, during the lease, can someone lease the tower and then decide to take it down or add to it? That's a fair question what, in a what, lease, what if the they lease the agreement. What was the question again? Can they modify the structure or remove the structure once they lease it and put something on its place? Mr. Young? No, they wouldn't be required. They can they could modify the structure, but only under the, only under the guidelines provided in the use. The modification will be the, whatever modifications they can make will be decided within the lease. Okay, they can't they can't take the so tower it's not really down. A boiler, it's not really a boilerplate lease. Then I mean, there's there's going to have to be specifics in this lease. I guess my point is before it was there are, there are specifics. Oh, hold on. Correct. My, my question, I just want clarification that this lease will not actually be a boilerplate, just a simple template. We're actually going to have to add a number of stipulations onto this lease as a town, is what I'm actually hearing. Well, I just and, initially it was a boilerplate. And, and, and I think as that I, was it, wrong. I'll step in here. And I, I think uh, town council answered that question uh, in that 
he would be, he and his firm would be taking a look at any lease before it's signed by the town. Uh, so any lease may or may not have a percentage of boilerplate language, That's but fine. it will be all yeah. looked at. I mean, every, every lease, as he says, has a percentage of boilerplate language in it. Well, and then, I, I you, and then you add a detract from that depending on what you're leasing and what you want your Correct. Your I guess I'm just be. trying to figure out as a town, as a citizen, what are we going to be adding and subtracting from this lease? It just seems very open-ended right now. Uh, it, it is open-ended, if I may. It is open-ended because there haven't been any re any requests put in formally with the selectmen. This is simply to declare it surplus so that they can start that process. And to request propose, and have RFPs be right. sent in. Right. Okay. I'm just conf I guess the last question is, if we have someone that is willing to pay uh, for a lease, are they going to be considered any more than someone who is just looking to lease it uh, for use. It's just it's a fair qu just a question I'm having. If someone, if an RFP comes in, wants to bring in revenue, will the Board of Selectmen consider that at a higher priority versus someone and that it, will not? And again, I think that's a bit out of the scope of this. I mean, that's a question for the Selectmen and it'll be okay. debated at their meetings. Okay, thank you. But outside of the scope. Uh, any other questions or comments? S Mr. McLeod. Uh, Mike McLeod, 27 Highland Terrace. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it seems pretty clear cut. We have an unused tower. We're going to lease it with the provision that if we need it, we take it back. So with that, I say we move to the vote, please. Thank you. So all those in favor of Article 24 signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed signify by saying nay. nay. The ayes have it. Article 24 is, oh, I'm sorry. Article 24 is adopted by a two-thirds vote. Article 25, Mr. Scott. Okay, we have someone who doubts the, uh, the judgment of the chair. Therefore, if we could have all those in favor of Article 24, please signify by raising your blue card at this time. In favor of Article 24, please raise your blue card. I'm sorry, you're having much too much fun back there. Thank you. Mr. Weeks. 20. 20. Ms. Skemet. 38. 38. Mr. Norton. 10. 10. All those opposed to Article 24, please signify by raising your blue cards at this time. Ms. Kemet. Three. Three. 20, 20, 20, 20. Mr. Weeks. Five. Five. Mr. Norton. Eighteen. So by a vote of 68 to 26, Article 24 passes by the required two-thirds vote. <coughs> Article 25, Mr. Scott. I move that the town vote to amend the Hanson General Bylaws, Article 2. Oh, Dan I'm sorry, Mr. Scott, one moment. Oh, I'm sorry. No, they just didn't vote. Yeah, those are the people who chose to vote. I, for instance, didn't vote. And some people may have, uh, may have stayed silent. It's, it's, I've already declared it done by a two-thirds vote. So... Article 25, Mr. Scott. I move the town vote to amend the Hanson General Bylaws, Article 2 2, Board of Selectmen, by adding a new Section 10 as printed in the warrant. <clears throat> a selectman may not hold oh, any. One moment, Mr. Scott. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Seconded. Mr. Scott. Okay. A selectman may not hold any compensatory office or employment in Hanson Town Government during the term for which he or she is elected nor hold any compensated appointed town office or employment for one year thereafter. 
Also, any member of the Board of Selectmen serving in such capacity at the time of the adoption of this section shall not be required to resign from any other position held and shall be allowed to complete his or her term of office. This bylaw shall apply for all town compensated positions where the appointment or removal is recommended to the relevant board, committee, commission, department head by the town administrator under the chapter 41 of the Acts of 2006, also known as Hanson Town Administrator Act. Also, any and all compensated offices or positions of employment in Hanson Town Government that are directly appointed by the Hanson Board of Selectmen under Mass State Law. And I believe that's the motion. So do we have a second? Second. Seconded. Uh, Mr. Scott. An explanation. It is the opinion of the Board of Selectmen that there is an incompatibility between Selectmen and any other government office within the town of Hanson. It does not make sense that a person may simultaneously serve as a town Selectman and a compensated town employee who would report either directly or indirectly to the Board of Selectmen. The rationale of this opinion is that incompatibility arises when a person holding two positions cannot perform the duties of each. In the situation of a town employee and the selectman, it is obvious that the selectman would have power over the employees in the areas of hiring, firing, and determining compensation, and as such, these two offices are incompatible. All right, before I uh, recognize the next speaker, um, we covered 24 articles in an hour and 20 minutes or so. <laughs> I don't want to take, I, I understand from some of the apparel out in the audience that there will be a debate on this article. Uh, on the other hand, I don't want to equal 24 articles worth of work to discuss this one. So to the extent that we can keep the, uh, the arguments clear and not repetitious, I would greatly appreciate it. Ms. Buzan. Anne-Marie Buzan, 95 Woodbrook Lane former select woman challenger. Um, I did, in fact, when I was running for the Board of Selectmen, contact the State Ethics Commission, had a thorough, probably 45 minute conversation with a woman from the State Ethics Commission. I informed her of my duties and my role as a town employee, as an administrative assistant to the building commissioner, as an employee under Ron Angelo, as a union steward. I told her everything about my, my position as employment. I received um, you know, information back from her verbally. She sent me an email. I'm not gonna read you the entire email, but I will read you what she referenced in her email to correspond to this article. It says, if elected, then in your role as selectman, you may not participate in any particular matter in which you have personal financial interests, such as negotiating the collective bargaining agreement for your position or decisions about benefits that affect you. You asked whether you could participate in collective bargaining negotiations as a steward for the union that covers clerical employees. You stated that the collective bargaining agreement provides for union stewards participating in such negotiations. I advised you that you would not be prohibited from participating in such negotiations as a union steward. The restriction would only be on participating in your role as selectman. Um, she goes on, and I don't have the other part of it, but she does go on to tell me that um, I could participate in everyone but my immediate supervisor's um, pay and contract and my paying contract. I could negotiate the town administrator's contract because he is not my direct supervisor. Um, and I could act currently, if you take tonight's um, articles, I could have voted on every single article in, in, the, um, in the warrant as printed. So I asked the Board of Selectmen, where would it be ethically and why couldn't someone that's working for the town run as, as a select woman for this town? Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Edgehill. Uh, Rich Edgehill, 115 South Street. You had mentioned that we've gone completely through this night nice and smooth. Could we take a quick vote on this? Doesn't it take two-thirds vote to beat this? 
It does not. It takes a majority vote. A majority vote? Yes. All right. And uh, to, the, to the former point, I don't want to go on too, too long. No, I don't either. But <laughs> uh, on the other hand, uh, I think a few perspectives is fine to, to get that out. Uh, Mr. Young. Uh, just one comment uh, to Ms. Ms. Buzan. When you were, when you were talking to the, um, when you were talking to the representative from the Ethics Commission, and you mentioned the fact that you were the union steward for the clerical union, right? And you told them that that you would you had um, the authority to negotiate those contracts for the um, for the clerical union on behalf of the clerical union. Did you also inform the the um, representative from the ethics. ethics commission that sitting across from you directly, okay, would be the town administrator? who also happens to be the lead negotiator on all union contracts, and that that particular individual, since you were a selectman, would be reporting directly to you, and that you would be uh, one of his supervisors. Did you, did you also say that okay. to the representative of the, of the Ethics Commission, just to clarify that? And here, I've allowed the horse to get out of the barn a bit here. Uh, if we could avoid talking about the specific incident that may have given rise to this. Well, she made that statement. Well, she did make that statement. And she brought up the, the opinion of the State Ethics Board. I just prefer to talk about this article on its own without getting into a, a rehashing of, that of the position. Okay. Ms. Buzan, if you could respond. Okay, so I did find the second half of that email. I won't go into a huge detail of it, but it says, it says, um, sorry, I just, I had it highlighted. Um, okay, so as a note, I assumed that as an administrative assistant to the building commissioner, you are under the direct supervision of the building commissioner, which I am. I also assume that the town administrator has administrative oversight over all town departments under the Board of Selectmen, but is not your direct supervisor. It's correct. Therefore, provided those assumptions are correct, under the precedents just noted, you are prohibited under Section 19 from participating in the town administrator's contract review and negotiations if, and only if, there are pending matters in which you have a financial interest in that the town administrator has direct immediate power to decide or to, to, to participate in deciding. Absent from ongoing negotiations or other live issues involving your financial interests over which he has a decisional power, you are not required by Section 19 to abstain from participating in his contract review or negotiations. All right. I didn't, I didn't so again, now, I'm just asking. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear what... what uh, my question was answered in here. I, I, uh, please, uh, let's not engage in a, uh, in a I, discussion. Uh, could we hear from Ms. Kemet? Um, yes, through you, Mr. Moderator, to town council. There are existing laws on the books in the state of Massachusetts that are very, very clear about conflict of interest, where if you are going to be perceived as having a conflict of interest, you either need to recuse yourself if you feel as though you can't act impartially, or you need to file a disclosure. Um, and I'm wondering, is this necessary? Do you think this is redundant? And, and, and is this something that you think that you would recommend the town adopt? Call upon the town council. All right, and I'm really gonna stay out of this. So um, there are parts of this bylaw that have redundancies in them. There are some things in this bylaw that are already prohibited. Some of them are already referenced in that email. So some of that ground is covered. There are other relationships in this proposed bylaw that are not covered by the ethics law, but really just follow the practice of many communities which really hold the office of the Board of Selectmen as something that shouldn't commingle with any other office in the town. So it, it's not atypical for towns to do that. It's not altogether universal either, but you're your point is well taken that there are some things here that already exist in addition to some of the 
items that are prohibited that were just referenced, if there was, say, a selectman who wanted to be a, a plow truck driver and have a contract with the town, that is already prohibited to have that kind of contract going forward. So there are some things that are already problematic. Um, so this covers some of them, but not all of them. And uh, an independent plow truck, not an official employee of the, t there are contracts that are already prohibited. So this covers some of the ground, but not all of the ground. The, the purpose, as I understand it, is twofold, to cover some of the things that are already covered and be redundant and drive that point home, as well as to create more of a sense of independence by this board that has n is not gonna commingle with any other department or function of the town. Okay, thank you. And um, just a question, uh, the way it's written, I, I think I understand who it's intended to you know, I guess encompass. Um, but the way it's written where there are capitalized terms that I can't really find referring, but you know, like town compensated, and I don't know where these things are referring back to, but when I look at it, it seems as though it's a lot more uh, wide um, reaching than, uh, you know, that I would have thought based upon the description. For instance, can, so can you give me a rundown? If I was a Whitman Hanson Regional School District employee, does this cover me? Because technically, as a Whitman Hanson Regional School District employee, I am an employee of both Whitman and Hanson. So I would be a town compensated employee, but since I don't know what you're referring back to or whoever, whoever it is that wrote this, um, I don't know what it's referring back to. I'm trying to trying to figure out, you know, is can we get a, a list of who this impacts? Mr. McGann, this question was brought up at town meet at one of our meetings, and the answer was no. The answer was no. Sorry, my throat's sore. The answer was no, that they were, they're not included in this article. Okay, and does town council agree that this article could, could not be interpreted to apply to school district employees? Um, I don't believe, and I'd have to look closer at the regional school agreement and the way things are done, that the fact that some municipal funds are used in the compensation of regional school district employees, I think generally, and I would defer even to labor council for the town, generally those are going to be compensated by the district themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when, when I've asked about conflict of interest things, I've been told that a town employee is considered a municipal employee, a district employee rather, is considered a municipal employee of both of the towns of the district. When I'd, it's have, a regional I'd have school to look district. at the, the context of that. I can't sit here and okay. guess what that question was or, or how they, they run that. I, I don't take that view necessarily, but it depends on the formation of the district as well. It's not a one size fits all answer I can give to that. Okay, thank and, you. And if we could hear from Ms. King. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to hear from town council about a town compensated employee entering into executive session for union bargaining and the fact that the person being paid for by the town, no matter the position, whether it's an administrative assistant, the town clerk or whomever sitting on the board who has to look at the complaints that come in from the citizens. And if town council really feels that they'd be able to be biased, be with all due respect, and I appreciate the support all the employees have for each other, but that doesn't look biased to me. Town council. Well, you, you covered a fair amount of ground there. And, and I, I think the, the ethics commission opinion is correct. It, it has to touch you personally to be conflicted. I will state that if you are conflicted, because if, for example, in the, the, the biggest case that's come out to date from the ethics commission is one involving a police officer, as comes out of the town of Carver, there's also one out of the town of Kingston, similar issue, where a police officer became a member of the board of selectmen. So pretty much anything touching negotiations with that union, as well as touching anything that may affect that employment relationship, including negotiating the town administrator contract and other assorted things, that police officer could not participate as a member of the board of selectmen. If they can't participate in that matter, they can also be in executive session. Too. You're barred. If you're conflicted, you're out. You can't participate, take place in it. You can't be at the table. You've got to go sit in the audience. All those things are, are apply in, in that situation. But the question in, in other respects is kind of too broad without specific context for me to give you, a one again, a one-size-fits-all opinion. 
Mr. Norton. Actually, Mr. O'Sullivan was there before me, but oh, all right. Would you like to defer to Mr. O'Sullivan? Yes, I'll defer to Joe. Oh, Mr. O'Sullivan, please. Thank you. This is the deferred Mr. O'Sullivan, 625 West Washington Street. Um, there are a lot of incredibly good town and municipal employees that I trust. I would love to have their experience in an administrative fashion, either in a variety of different offices in this town. I think this motion limits participation by some very competent people with years and years of experience in how this town runs. So I would encourage you to vote against this. Thank you. And Mr. Norton, please. I'm going to reinforce uh, what Mr. O'Sullivan just said by commenting that there are over 7,000 registered voters in this town. And we got 114 here at a meeting where we needed 100. And that's because the Patriots aren't playing a Monday night game and the Red Sox aren't in the playoffs. Because in those instances before, we have had trouble with a quorum. Anything in the 30 years I've lived here, I can count on my fingers the number of contested selectman races. There's usually one name on the ballot, take it or leave it. And the participation in those votes is very, very slight. I work the polls. Anything that diminishes people wanting to get involved in town government is a mistake. There is no reason we have the strongest state ethics in the country and a ton of conflict of interest laws that I've run into, even in a non-compensated position. It's just redundant, it's silly, and it just, it seems to be aimed at a couple of particular people. <clears throat> Mr. McGann. As a result of that issue with the town of Carver, they came up with their own item. A selectman may not hold any other elective or compensated office under government of the town of Carver during the term for which he or she is elected, nor any compensative appointed town office or employment for one year thereafter. Also, that any member of the Board of Selectmen serving in such capacity at the time of the adoption of this section shall not be required to resign from any other position held and shall be allowed to complete his or her term. It's not that we're saying that people, there are a lot of good people in our town. There are a lot of good people in our town. But all it takes is one person or two or a couple to do the wrong thing, to really throw things in the wrong, wrong way for us, for this town. Okay, I'm not saying in Emory's case that's the case. I, I'm sure you'll make an excellent select woman. I truly do. But all it takes is one, and we've had our history over time of, ba of, of people in the wrong place. So instead, we chose to be proactive as opposed to being reactive. And I'd like to wrap this up. So, sir, if you could please state your name and... Uh... Tom Dahlberg, 66 Hillcrest Road. I think I'd just like to remind everyone that we're from the same human race as those people in Kingston and Carver. We run under the same laws, rules, and regulations. We don't need problems in Hanson. In the 40 years I've lived here, we've had more than our fair share of problems and to resolve at town meeting. Tonight we have an opportunity to keep a problem from happening. It isn't one that might happen given the history of the human race. It's a problem that will happen if we don't pass this article. It's just a matter of when. So I would urge you to vote yes on this article and for once go away from town meeting saying we kept a problem from happening tonight. Thank you. Mr. Hayes. Through you, Mr. Moderator to Town Council, out of the 351 communities in Massachusetts, do you have any idea the number of communities that have this type of a bylaw? Was Town there any Council. research done on it? Because I, I can tell you there are 351 communities. But it would be really impressive if I did have that number <laughs> off the top of my head, I can tell you that. Um, uh, I, I don't, and, and uh, what I can tell you is that there are varying versions of what's before you here tonight. I'm not advocating for or against it, but there's all kinds of different versions of these um, types of bylaws that limit participation in other boards or holding other positions. 
This one I've seen a few times, it's very similar. There's a number of other ones that limit selectman participation in certain other positions. Um, but I can't, I can't pinpoint you. What I can tell you, it's not uncommon to go beyond, for municipalities to go beyond the conflict of interest laws and place limits on whether people can hold two elected positions or an elected and, and, and an appointed, or if you're on the FinCom, you can't do anything else. There are a number of things like that that exist throughout the Commonwealth in more than a majority of towns, in, in my experience, representing towns. But I can't tell you how much this exact one, a few at least, um, in various shades of gray. Thank you. Ms. King, you've already spoken. Do you have something new? I, yes. I, through you, Ms. Money, I'd like to address town meeting to remind them that if in executive session that the one member has to be barred if they're a municipality compensated employee, that there's a great possibility with only four selectmen in executive session that there will be a tie vote. We need that fifth person to have a true democracy. And I urge you to vote no for that reason. Thank you. Mr. Campbell. Yes, Ms. Moratti, through you to the board. Oh, yes. Mr. Campbell. Yes, Mr. Moderator, through you to the board, Joe Campbell, 150 Woodbine Ave. Would the board reconsider and instead amend their article so that it states that at no time more than one chair of the selectmen, uh, selectmen board be uh, town employed? So that way it comes to a middle ground with what the debate is. Instead of a yes or a no, it comes to a middle ground and it limits town employees to one chair of the board, therefore not being more powerful. I'm sorry, one seat. One seat of the board. Oh, Mr. McGann. Joe, thank you for your, <clears throat> Joe, thank you for what you have to say. There are some towns, I stopped counting it, I think six is what I caught, it was what I came to, um, that have that restriction. If I'm not mistaken, Hanson too has its own rule where uh, members of the finance committee <coughs> Correct. Uh, can't be uh, selectmen. What it comes down to, Joe, is we went through the terminology. We tried to be careful because we did try not to, not to include everybody as the people of Carver did. We tried to be very careful in how we worded this so that we could have people who don't work in those areas who could run, okay? What I can tell you is we started going down the path of doing uh, comparisons of how many towns had it. it, it we, I stopped because it, it made sense to me. It made sense. And I also started to try to do comparisons on what other towns have in terms of our population, in terms of what another town's population is. And then I realized afterwards that it, what we're trying to address here is, is essentially human nature, right? And human nature is the same. Whether you're a town of 10,000, 50,000, whatever, it doesn't matter. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So okay. I, I understand what you're saying, I do, I respect it, but I'd like to keep the article as it is. Thank you. All right, and I think we have debated this uh, extensively, and uh, taking Mr. Edgehill's uh, admonition, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of Article 25, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying nay. Nay. In the opinion of the chair, the nays have it. Is there a motion to take account? Oh, I'm shocked, shocked that there was such a thing. I'm just going through the motions, people. All right. If we could please have the tellers. All those in favor of Article 25, please signify by raising up your blue cards at this time. Hold them high and keep them up until you've been counted, please. Mr. Norton? One. I counted it twice to be sure. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Weeks? 18. 18. Ms. Kemet? 39. 39. All those opposed to Article 25, please signify by raising your cards at this time. Ms. Kemet. Um, okay, I've got 14. 14. Mr. Weeks? Six. Six.
Mr. Norton? I have 28, and for purposes of a quorum, I saw at least two people who did not vote either way. By a vote of 58 to 48, the uh, Article 25 is adopted. Article 26, Mr. Ellis. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I move to vote to delete in its entirety the existing table of contents section of the town of Hanson, Plymouth County, Massachusetts, land use regulations zoning bylaw, and accept in its entirety a recodified table of contents section uh, dated July 16, 2015 of the Town of Hanson, Plymouth County of Massachusetts, land use regulation zoning bylaw on file at the office of the town clerk. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded. Mr. Ellis. Um, the current zoning bylaws were recodified at the special town meeting on October 2014. This document did not include a new table of contents section. The table of contents um, has been revised to reflect the recodification of the zoning bylaws and involved a change in the format, layout, and numbering structure of the bylaw. This is purely a housekeeping change. There are no amendments to the language of the bylaw. Thank you. And uh, we will need a two thirds vote on this uh, article. Uh, any questions or comments on Article 26? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 26 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it by a two-thirds vote. Article 27, Mr. Ellis. Thank you. I move the town vote to amend the town of Hanson, Plymouth, County of Plymouth, Massachusetts, land use regulations zoning bylaw, section 7C, the table of dimensional requirements, note 4, accessory buildings to reduce the rear or side yard setback requirements for accessory buildings from 20 feet distance to the property line to 10 feet setback from the rear or side property line. A copy of the proposed amendment uh, to the Town of Hanson zoning bylaws may be reviewed at the office of the town clerk, 542 Liberty Street, Hanson, Massachusetts. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded. Mr. Ellis. Uh, the current town zoning bylaws established a 20-foot rear or side property line setback requirement for accessory buildings. This amendment will reduce the rear side, the rear or side property line setback requirements to a distance of 10 feet. Are there any questions or comments on Article 27? Oh, Ms. Arena. Barbara Arena, 131 Whitman Street. I just had a question through you, Mr. Moderator, for a clarification on what constitutes an accessory building. I've heard the term shed, but no dimensional um, restrictions around what a shed might be. Mr. Ellis? Okay, the uh, building inspector, just a little light on the subject, the building inspector asked for this and he had a number of uh, reasons for this and I'll read some of them. He uh, gave me a letter proposed. Uh, why should we change our law regarding accessory structures? Many residents call this office, this is the building inspector now, calls this office asking for a setback for an accessory structure. When we tell them 20 feet from the property line, and 20 feet from the house, they express that it, would, it will locate the shed or accessory structure in the middle of a backyard, and there, are, there will be not enough room for anything else in the yard. And he goes on to say, several times the residents simply put the shed and accessory structures up with no permit because of the restrictions. Uh, another thing he mentions, most surrounding towns have a five foot or 10 foot setback on accessory buildings. Uh, this proposed change will not apply to commercial properties, it's just residential properties. Keep in mind, the town of Hanson does not have a sewer, town sewer, and a lot of backyards are full with leaching fields, which this restricts with sheds and accessory structures can go. He also mentions that many properties contain wetlands uh, towards the rear of the property, restricting the usable portion of the lot, so it becomes more restrictive. 
He's got here, the definition of an accessory structure represents the structure is incidental to the pro primary use. It is typically a building to keep your outdoor equipment in, meaning lawnmowers and snowblowers. Does that answer your question, Ms. Arena? Uh, no, there's no size. Like, is it 10 by 10, 10 by 12, 20 by 20? My son has a lot of outdoor equipment that if he stored <laughs> indoors would be rather extensive. That's a good question. I don't know if I can really answer that, but typically it's a shed. Uh, and uh, the sheds, I think, I believe, are 120 square feet that don't require a building permit. Right, right. A um, and in doing that, what happens is they end up putting it wherever they want to. Now, if they go beyond, right. beyond that, then it requires a building permit. Correct? Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 27. Oh, we need a two-thirds two -thirds. vote on this yes. as well. So all those in favor of Article 27 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Article 27 is adopted. Once again, oh, by a two-thirds vote. Once again, please come out to vote tomorrow. Uh, hope to see you all there. Otherwise, I adjourn this special town meeting.